What's going on? It's your boy Bird the Ghost. Shout out to Chicago Street TV, man. Who you with? Bird the Ghost. Living to get to heaven, why my demons dance on walls. I'm still breathing for a good reason. Time to believe in a higher cause. Pushing my limits, I'm reaching. So, what are your thoughts of Chicago so far? Chicago, man, I ain't got nothing but love for Chicago as a whole. The surrounding cities, the inner city, you know, everybody in this city has shown love to the team, to Carolyn, to myself, and G Love, you know. So, I mean, mad love for Chicago for real. So, what is some food you have out here so far? Man, I've had all sorts of food, but I forget the name of the spot and where we was at, but this little burrito that I had, man, had me singing, put some hot sauce on my burrito, baby. Like, for real, who you with? <laughs> you want to let us know what part of Texas you're from? Man, Houston, Texas. I was born in Austin, but I moved to Houston when I was like three months old, and I grew up uh, all around Houston. I've lived on the south side, of, but most of my life I've lived on the north side. I've stayed on the east side. I mean, shout out to all sides of town, of course, but... I mean, Houston is home. So what were some of those neighborhoods like growing up, and what are those neighborhoods looking like now? Man, on the cool, depending where you at, it's looking exactly the same as it was back then. But, I mean, some parts, you know, I mean, it, uh, as far as a whole, you know, the city stays moving. So, you know, it's, it's you know, <laughs> prime time on that one. But as far as, like, my old hoods, if I go back to the old hood, they, they'd holler at me. With that same old thing, hey bird, who you with? You know, and try to get some on a smooth tip or something like that. But I mean, that's why I stay moving. You know, I had to escape certain traps and everything. But you know, mad love to back home and each one of them spots that I stayed at and everybody that I messed around with. You know what I'm saying? You want to let us know how you got the name Bird the Ghost? How I got the name Bird the Ghost? Um, right off the jump, rest in peace, Josh Bozoth, uh, A.K.A. Bird. He was my little brother. You know, little. I, I, not bonded by blood, but at the same time, you know, he was my brother. I've known him since I was like four or five years old. We grew up together and everything like that. And uh, he was the rapping ass. So when I was asked uh, what my stage name was, you know, my, my original response was like, hold on, I ain't no stripper. What you mean stage name? <laughs> but on a real, real note, you know, I mean, when I thought about it, the only thing that I could think of was keeping Bird's name alive through my music. So here I am, you know, going... Bird the Ghost, B-Y-R-D, why did he have to die? You know, Bird the Ghost, keeping his name alive through my music. You want to let us know how it is that you got involved in a rap game? On the cool, it was unintentional. Uh, I slid through to my homeboy Ricky Blaze's show at Tote Bar. This was probably about seven years ago, uh, maybe eight years ago now, hell, I don't even know. But, I mean, I uh, was introduced to the right people, and those people, they... they Worked with a, a, a media company and one of the radio stations down there, and I started working with them, you know, put in work. My name started, you know, getting a little buzz as far as, you know, who you with, Bird of Ghost, you know, with the hosting and everything. So I started on the media side, and then, um, I mean, I had a conversation with a few people like, why, why ain't you rapping, Bird? I was like, well, really, I never, you know, wanted to be a rapper or whatever, but you got mad flows, Bird, so why don't you do it? So, you know, here I am. I, I went ahead and... uh. Started doing it professionally about three, maybe four years ago now. You know, I think it was the end of 2018 is really when I started focusing on Bird the Ghost as a brand, uh, a rapper, an artist, and an MC as a, you know, uh, who I am today, you know, everything like that. Started focusing on myself, you know, and uh, I, I uh, respectfully went my separate ways and with that media company. And, you know, here I am hollering who you with in Shot Town with Carolyn Rodriguez and G Love. <laughs> Can you let us know the story behind your track, Personal? Personal. <sighs> the um, beat right off the rip. I mean, uh, shout to Sean Solo. Uh, you know, uh, by the way, as far as the man who did the beat, um, the reason I, I wrote that song in the way I did as far as Don't Take It Personal is because 
I know in this industry, you get a lot of hate on the back end because, you know, people see you making moves. Like, for example, right now I'm in Chicago, you know, and whether they believed in me in my face or didn't it in my face, you know, despite that, you know, I made that song for the, anybody who believed in me and also people that didn't believe in me to, you know, don't take it personal, man. I'm just out here doing my thing, you know, like really honestly music saved my life. You know, if you listen to the track, you'll know what I'm talking about with what I'm speaking on. But I mean, honestly, you know, I put in the work for many years, uh, you know, and with hard work and dedication, I mean, comes success. So don't take it personal that I'm body rocking out of state or don't take it personal that, that you know, just at all, it's just whatever, however the perspective is, you know, in life or whatever you're going through. So as a listener and, and a fan, you know, it's like, man, don't allow these people to take, you know, uh, uh, get, get things twisted with taking it personal. Don't allow someone to sway you. You know, so there's mo multiple different ways that I can explain that song, but I mean, honestly, just I mean, who you with right now? Chicago TV. Don't take it personal, baby. <laughs> Is there any artists that you have worked with? I mean, I got two artists in the room right now: Carolyn G. Love, right off the top. Shout out to Boombox Bravo. Shout out to Sir Chocks. Shout out to Iris. Shout out to KV. Kelly Victoria. Shout out to um boombox bravo he's the one that you know uh really got at me when i first started recording on the back end you know uh mad love for him uh shout out to king baby king baby familiar um i, I mean I, i've had quite a few artists iris i've worked with iris mad love her and danny uh danny he uh is a producer you know out of audible studios but um i mean i'm sure there's one or two so my bad if i forgot you and you watching this right now it's been, you know, an, an amazing tour with Carolyn. So, you know, we're towards the end of it right now. So I apologize if I missed your name. So you had mentioned earlier that you're working with a media outlet. And, yeah. Um, you said you, you had worked with Hustle Town Network on YouTube. You want to let us know what exactly your wo role was with Hustle Town Network? Hustle Town Network. Um, on the media side, when, for Hustle Town Network, first, 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 first. I'm talking about before when it was an idea. I was a part of the, you know, original team members and everything that helped uh, put that together, you know, for the city, for the local Latino artists in Houston and everything like that. So um, I told you that I went to Ricky Blaze's show. He actually introduced me to Lil Tex or Infamous Tex. He goes by now, but he introduced me to him. So I started, uh, you know, putting in the work, you know, because I mean, on same hustle all day. So, you know, I put in my work and with the music industry and on the media side, I. Uh, for like three years, you know, I worked with them and did a lot of things, hosting shows, hosting live shows. Uh, I was, uh, that was towards the end of it. But how I started was a videographer, you know, behind the camera, behind the scenes, setting and, and, and co-directing and, and uh, setting up everything as far as uh, different drops, interviews, so on and so forth. Matter of fact, that's how I met Carolyn. Um, Tex had hit me up. He was like, hey, man, you know, uh, go to this spot and uh, get a couple of drops from so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so and, and Carolyn was one of those uh, artists uh, that I was getting a drop from. And I met her through them, as a matter of fact, you know. So uh, as far as the videography, doing interviews, doing drops, then they put me in the front lines as far as uh, hosting live shows because I got that, who you with? It's your boy, Bird the Ghost. Hey, man, how y'all doing? You know, kind of personality. So I'm out there in your face. So they seen that and put me there. And then, um, as, uh, like, I got nothing but respect for them, you know, as a whole, because, I mean, I respect how I got into the industry, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. Shout out to Hustle Town Network. Do um, you want to let us know what it's like behind the scenes as far as, like, hosting live shows or um, filming behind or taking photos and all that, what it takes to do all that? <laughs> uh dedication like straight up dedication and the drive to want to do it because i mean i when i was doing it i was doing it to build my resume so when i was building as i was building my resume i had that focus i had that drive i still do don't get it twisted you know but i still you know uh if anybody wants to go that route on that type of dedication and everything you know that's exactly what it says you got to keep put, putting in work stay consistent and, and stay moving uh but as far as um interviewing different artists and, and doing that stuff and everything like that like it was it was an honor and a blessing just to meet these individuals and just to add, you know do what you're doing with me right now you know i mean that like that right there uh says it all you know i, I enjoyed doing it so when it came to doing the 180 on being on this side of the camera it's like it all this came easy to me so being from texas 
Um, I would just say that SPM impacted the land rap or just the rap game in general as a whole for the state of Texas. You know what? On the cool, growing up, like that's all I heard was SPM, South Park Mexican, with, with all the homeboys on the block. As far as like, uh, even now, you know, like even these, uh, these youngsters, you know, like I'm 35 years old, like even now, you know, they, they be playing that, 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 uh, uh, chopping school, you know, SPM and shit. It's like, you know what? Carlos, he's had, uh, an impact on the Latino community more ways than one down here in Texas. And not to mention, even even in Chicago or even in, uh, uh, in California and everything, you know, it, it, despite any any type of perspective, like Latino community, when it comes to the Latino rap game, Los, man, that that man had that shit on lock back then, and even now. Do you remember listening to SPM when like you first heard him? You know what? Um, as far as me remembering flowing and freestyling for the first time ever. That was two an SPM track. Uh, 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 coming up, coming down that G from Mace Town. On the cool, on the block with the homeboys, you know what I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, me being uh, a mixed breed, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, uh, Meek Low or whatever. I had a lot to prove. So when it came to my freestyles, like that was one of the first tracks I ever freestyled too. So when it comes down to it, yes, on the block, you know, that's that's that was locked up, sold up to the fullest, you know, as far as like uh, uh, Los having an influence on that. Being from Texas and growing up as music, do you remember when SPM got locked up or the day he got locked up? Nah, not at all. Why? Because I was a kid back then, you know, and back then, being a kid, all that political and, and uh, uh, judicial system and so on and so forth, you know, being like 11, 12, 13 years old, like I couldn't tell you the exact age I was, but I don't remember because I was young, I was a kid, so therefore, like, it did not have any type of influence on me besides the simple fact that, hey, damn, you heard... Carlos Court got locked up. Besides that, I have nothing, man. You know, like for real. Back then, on that perspective. You want to let us know what your first tattoo was and at what age you got it? <laughs> first tattoo was Baby G. I got, <laughs> I got it covered. So it was old English. It was done with a, 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 a guitar pick, or not a, not a guitar pick, but a guitar string and a motor from an RC car. It looked bad, horrible, so I covered it. But I got the girl, or my cousin did this tattoo. He's out of Corpus. Shout out to uh, the Inner Hustle family. Uh, but anyways, uh, he covered it right here, and I went ahead and told him to put Baby G on her wrist, you know, so that's that's my old lady forever, you know. She got my original nickname on it. So I went ahead, covered it, and then re-tattooed it. So, but yeah, it was like 13. Hit it from my mom for about three years. I got arrested, went to juvie, and I was like, Mom, I'm already here, you know, boom. Showed her what's up with the tattoo, and she was she just shook her head, and she was like, you already in jail. Can't beat that, beat the shit out you right now. So, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> was that tattoo painful? Oh, I don't remember. I was kind of <laughs> twisted like a back rope. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you told that you're basically like grew up in Houston. You want to let us know what is your three favorite taco joints or Mexican restaurants out there? Whew. That is a really hard question uh, because there's so many amazing places out there. I don't want to just name the top three because I don't need anybody, you know, being, being feeling some type of way. But, I mean, there's... Um, what was it a Goro, Goro's Ninos tacos? He has the lean sauce, uh, salsa. <sighs> Man, uh, that, that I mean, yeah. Shout out to that. That that's 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 the name of them. Uh, 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 hell, I don't even remember Gordo's Tacos. Yeah, I mean, shout out to homeboy. I'm pretty sure that's the name. My bad, but I mean, as far as me personally, <laughs> as far as my top three, I mean, I got a taco joint right there off of Jensen. I don't know the exact name of this little taco truck, but it's a green truck just south of Barry. 
Um, you going south on Jensen is right there. You know, shout out to the ladies that work over there. But other than that, man, I mean, I'm a, I'm a taco truck kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so there's that one. There's one off of Sheldon on the east side, right before the tracks. You know, you, you can't miss it. Hey, I'm, I'm a taco truck dude, so I can't tell you, you know, as far as actual restaurants. Taco Madres. Taco Madres, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, taco Madres, like, ugh. Yeah, Taco Madres is, 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 is extremely good, too, you know. So, I mean, that's total respect to them. Shout out to them. <laughs> you got any upcoming projects? Oh, uh, yes. As a matter of fact, I do. It's called As Above, So Below. Um... My last two projects, I've, I've been in a transitioning period, so uh, the reason why I chose As Above, So Below, because what you project in this life is what reflects in the next life, or even what you project in this life reflects in this life as well. I mean, some people look at it as karma, but uh, as far as the topics, the different things that I'm speaking on on this album, uh, you know, it, it, it's a lot of self-reflection, a lot of uh, storytelling, you know, deep stuff that's uh, that I've seen in the streets, you know, and that... that uh, I put together in a manner to where it makes you think about your own life. So uh, in, in full circle, you know, as above, so below, I want you to think about your own life when you listen to my music. And that's why I, uh, I did this album uh, uh, the way I did it and named it the way I did. Is there any features or date release we can expect? Uh, date release, November 2nd, Dia de los Muertos, 3.33 uh, a.m., why not? <laughs> um just because, you know, it's, it's, uh, I chose that day because as above, so below from the other side, that is the day we celebrate the people that we have lost and, and reflection to celebrating my brother's death, go, why I go by birth the ghost and so on and so forth. Uh, it ain't on no, no demon, no devilish type of vibe or anything like that. So don't misconstrue it as far as the timing, you know, 333, three, three, there's a whole different realm of, uh, you know, numerology and everything like that. But that's besides right. the point. I got Carolyn Rodriguez on there. I got uh, Boombox Bravo on there. I have KV on As Above, So, Low, uh, so Below. I have uh, Iris. She's going to be on there. Uh, I plan to get uh, Sir Chox on there again and um, hopefully G-Love as well. And... I mean, there's a few other artists that I'm uh, that are on the fence. So there's, you know, some paperwork things that I got to handle up on. So, you know, I, in due time, I'll let you know. Y'all see when I drop it, November 2nd, as above, so below. Can you let us know where we can follow you on all your social media platforms? At B-Y-R-D-T-H-E-G-H-O-S-T. Bird the ghost. Who you with, baby? <laughs>